Hi Sparks, it's Miss Katrina here and I know I don't typically get to hang out with you all but I'm so excited today because we're gonna have so much fun. So let's just dive right in. And the first thing I've got, we've got four pictures and these pictures have a certain theme to it. I wanna see if you guess it, okay? So if you got it, call it out. Here's picture number one. Who's that? Might look familiar. Picture number two. It's got three eyes, it's green, it's got something on top of his head. I don't know what it is, but kind of cute. I kind of like him. And another one, more on the creepy end. I have no idea what he's coming out of, but he looks so weird. And then there's this one. He's got like a little snort horn. No, I don't know what it is, but he's driving like a spaceship. But any ideas what I'm trying to get at? Do you have any ideas? It's aliens. So when you think of alien sparks, you might think of something that comes from out of space. Uh, they look funny, they look weird, but guess what? The Bible also talks about aliens. And when it talks about aliens, they refer to as strangers. And a stranger, um, you might know as somebody that is unfamiliar, that you don't know or you've never spoken to. And your parents have probably told you to be careful around strangers, that if you're around a stranger, you should probably be very close to your parents or a trusted parent or a guardian. Um, and that's really good. You definitely want to keep up with that. But in the Bible, a stranger or an alien is referred to somebody that comes from another country. That means that they might have um, a different culture, speak a different language, eat different foods, or they wear different clothes than you. That's an alien. And the Israelites, remember, they were God's chosen people, special people. They also were called aliens or strangers when they lived in Egypt. So when they were in Egypt, it wasn't their country. So they were unfamiliar with the Egyptians and their culture, but they weren't treated very nicely in Egypt as aliens or strangers. They were actually treated very harshly. They were actually worked very, very hard by the Egyptians and they were hurt so bad that they cried out to God and asked him to take them out of Egypt. And that's exactly what he did. God brought them out of Egypt in what we call the Exodus. They exited out of Egypt and he brought them into the wilderness and they wandered the wilderness for 40 years. So you might have be familiar with that story, um, but after 40 years, God brought them to the promised land. So I want to show you a map between Egypt and the promised land. Here it is. So here's my map. There's Egypt on the left side, and when you follow the red line, you can see their journey the Israelites took through the wilderness for 40 years in the middle there, and then all the way towards the right, that's where the promised land is. So back into the story. Remember, the Israelites are now in the promised land, and God commands the Israelites to welcome all of the strangers and aliens that are going to be joining their group or visiting their group to be kind and to love on them, not like how they were treated in Egypt. Remember, it was very, very harsh and not very nice or welcoming. But this time, when there's an alien or stranger that comes to the Israelites, to welcome them with so much love and kindness because then that way they might get to know about God and to feel and love um, and learn to love God. And that's what God wants. He wants all the aliens and all the strangers to feel and know God's love and to be welcomed inside of his family, inside of his group. And so when the Israelites share that, it's kind of like they're missionaries. So let me ask you this, Sparks, what is a missionary? And feel free to shout it out right now. And you might have heard missionaries in our church because we have missionaries in our church. Missionaries, they go out and tell people about Jesus. You might think of missionaries who go to other countries, to other places, who travel to other people to speak their language and learn about their culture and share God's word with them. That, are, that is definitely a missionary, but did you know, Sparks, that you can be a missionary too? And that's what God calls us to be. We might not get a chance to travel around, especially not these days, and that's okay because a missionary is just simply who goes out and tells people about Jesus. They don't have to travel. They just find whoever they meet. Maybe they're your friends at school. Maybe it's your teacher. Maybe it's your next door neighbor. Maybe it's the mailman who comes to bring the mail to you. God wants you to just share God's love in any way that you possibly can. Maybe it's writing them letters, baking them cookies, 
or just sending little notes to them saying, hey, God loves you. That's how you can share and show God's love to other people. And that is called being a missionary. And God even commands it to us. We read it in God's Bible. So let me see your Bibles. Hold it up right here. Here's mine. God commands it. And he says it in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. It says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. So sometimes being a missionary might, might be a little bit scary, make us feel uncomfortable. But the good and comforting thing is that God is always with us. That's what it says in this verse, that he's always with us and that's the great thing. So I want to encourage you and I want to pray over each of you sparks as you go out and be missionaries. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for each and every single one of these sparks that they are here, that they are learning your word, God. I pray that you um, are with them, that you give them courage and strength and the words to speak to be able to share and be missionaries to share your love and to share your word with people around them, whether that's their friends or their teachers or somebody else um, walking down their street, God. Keep them safe, um, but also allow them to share and be bold to share your word, God. It's in Jesus' name I pray all these things. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Sparks, for listening and allowing me to join in with you. Until next time.